Our last but not least uh, humanitarian award winner tonight is someone I'm proud to call a friend, someone who's been a friend of many people without voice. Uh, in fact, we had the event here because she helped shut down the nuclear plant next door that wasn't so safe. <laughs> so I'm really grateful to her. Uh, but I remember having dinner with her, with our families, and she was, it was right after the first summit, and she asked me, what are you up to these days? And I just, in passing, explained this patient safety movement and how we're losing 200,000 people a year in our country alone, 3 million worldwide. And, and, and you know, we talked about it, and you know, she, obviously she was, was very interested, but I, I didn't know what kind of impact it had on her. The next morning, uh, she called me, uh, early morning, and said, Joe, I could not sleep last night. I didn't know about this. I can't believe what a big problem this is. She had already called her chief of staff and everyone. This is, this is, by the way, I think either a Saturday or Sunday that <laughs> she was doing this. And ever since then has been the biggest advocate for patient safety, reached out to all California hospitals and asked them, what are you doing about patient safety? And just would not let go until they gave her the answer she wanted. She's gone to hospitals who are doing something about patient safety to bring the limelight to them, to thank them for what they're doing. And we're just so grateful to her for everything she's done. Uh, please uh, welcome our next humanitarian and final humanitarian award winner tonight, Senator Barbara Boxer. Everybody. I, um, I'd like to take about three, four minutes because what you're doing is so monumental and it's my chance to thank you for this award. And Joe, in your day job, you make life better for people by figuring out ways to test them that are non-invasive. That is so huge. That alone, that alone would be a gift to humanity. And then what you're doing here, could we hear it for our leader here, Joe Kiani? I, people don't come around like this that often. Wow. And so um, I'm also excited that my former colleague, my dear friend Tom Harkin, is affiliated now with the company, and I, I love him, and I could just tell you, follow his leadership and you'll do even greater things. I just love Tom so much, and his leadership in the Senate is really missed on health care, but he's staying in the game, and it means a lot to America, I think. So I'm very touched to get this award. Um, I was here a couple of years ago uh, just to say hi and give a little keynote address and now I get this award it's pretty cool actually and I'll never forget when Joe opened up my eyes to medical errors he told you the story he was he just because Joe was not bragging about anything I what are you doing and he tells me and then he introduces me to Lenore Alexander and I don't know if Lenore is here this year. Um, is she here with us? She lost her beautiful 11-year-old daughter, Leah, to a medical error, and it was so obvious. They didn't monitor the pain medication she received after surgery. As we say, this is not rocket science. So as a mother and a grandmother, I, and certainly as a senator, I vowed I would do everything I could about this issue. And the one thing I would urge you to do, and I do it all the time, is go over to some of the smartest people in any room, not in this room, but in other rooms, and just at a party, a dinner party, just some friends gathering and say, tell me the top three leading causes of death. And I have done this so many times. No one gets it, unless they hang out with Joe. <laughs> then they get it. And, you know, they'll say, cancer or heart, we don't know which one. And then the third one, they name things that just don't even come close. 
So what I think is important is this information is critical to get out, the sheer numbers that we're talking about, because it takes people aback, and then it gets them interested. And then putting the faces on the numbers, like you did outside, Joe. I read every one of those plaques. It touches your heart, because yes, you want to know the scope of the problem, but then you want to know the humanity of the problem, and you see it outside this room. Young people, middle-aged people, old people, babies, but unnecessary uh, deaths. So um, yes, I went around the state with this information. Yes, I wrote to every single California hospital. So I had to focus on this great state. We have 40 million people and more hospitals than anybody else, more everything than anybody else. And we are trendsetters. And so we found out when we wrote them, they would, some of them wrote back, of course, the ones that are good. And how many hospitals are here now, people representing hospitals? Anybody? A couple. So thank you for being here. Several hospitals were using new technologies, including barcodes and electronic health records, make, to make sure that people got the safe doses that they needed. Others were reducing the risk of infection by using ultraviolet technology to disinfect hospital rooms. One hospital, Desert Valley Hospital in Victorville, okay, who would have known this, cut the number of surgical site infections from 16 a year to two after starting a program that rewards medical staff who are observed practicing good hand hygiene by entering them into a drawing and a chance to win prizes. So yeah, I mean simple things like that that just change people's it, it calls it to their attention and makes it important. Um, now, 9% of the hospitals never answered my letter. That was not good. And they heard from me, and they continued to hear from me. And what I said at a press conference, I'm going to rev it up now again, because I got this. Now I have to keep at it. I can't let you down. So yeah, I'm going to keep at it this year. <laughs> but um, you know. I said at this press conference, I said, I'm going to publicize which of these hospitals didn't answer. They obviously are not doing anything good on this front, or they would have answered the letter. And I think it's critical. I just, as a sidebar, we senators know how to use our bully pulpit. Um, I don't know whether you're aware, it's another kind of no-brainer thing, that uh, up until this recent highway bill, you could go to a, a rental car company and they would lease you a car that was under recall. Did you know that? Of course not. You wouldn't think they would, but they did. And so, because I knew it would take years to get the law passed, Joe, I just stood in front of the, you know, a chart and said, these are the car companies that are still leasing recall dangerous cars. They changed. And I think that's the kind of thing the president was talking about, that we have to be in their face on this thing. These are good, nice people. They're busy, they're hectic, but guess what? They now have to act because we have the information. So um, I, wanna, I have some numbers here that may or may not align with your numbers. I never, because I didn't know when you gave the numbers whether it was yearly. So let me get the numbers that I have. The federal agency, this is so good. <laughs> Get ready to applaud yourselves because last month, the Federal Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality said we had saved 87,000 lives since 2010 because of this campaign. 87,000 lives. This is coming from a federal agency. Now, the reason this is happening is because of this patient safety movement and because of the changes in healthcare that were included in Obamacare that this organization was behind. I know that because I was in those rooms and they put incentives in there to reward uh, good uh, operations in this area. Um, one leading healthcare expert called this progress historic. You know, we all so are so happy that Joe Biden's going to lead us as best that, that he can, and he has endless energy toward a moonshot to find a cure for cancer. 
God, we pray. Every one of us knows someone. It's a terrible disease. But if someone's in a hospital and they get cured of cancer, they find, but they pick up an infection and leave us, you get my drift. This is not something that we can allow to continue. We need 100% uh, prevention, the zero preventable deaths. So I'm at the end at my, of my comments. I am a senator, and it is hard to speak briefly. I Forgive me for that. But I am at the end, and a couple of you remember that two years ago, in the middle of my speech, I gave you uh, a saying in the Jewish tradition. And that saying is, and some of you remembered it, whoever saves a life, it is as if that person has saved the world. Whoever saves a life, it is as if that person had saved the world. Well, you know, we can save the world many times a day because of what you are doing. And you know, you will be heroes to people who never ever knew your name. The gentleman who came up here before, Joe, all of us who are doing whatever we can, maybe no one will know our names for what we did. But my God, it matters what's in here, and we will know. So let's keep it up. Zero preventable deaths. Thank you for this award. I'm very touched by it. Thank you so much.